ในเรื่องของการพูดคุยในหัวข้อต่อไปน่าสนใจมากจาก Oracle นะครับท่านคงทราบว่า Oracle นี้เป็นผู้นำด้านของสารสนเทศมายาวนานแล้วก็มีนวัตกรรมรวมถึงงานวิจัยที่น่าสนใจมากมายเช้าวันนี้ Oracle จะได้มาพูดคุยกับเรานะครับว่าบทบาทของ HR ในอนาคตถ้าจะต้องเตรียมตัวตั้งแต่วันนี้จะต้องเป็นอย่างไรและเมื่อกี้ได้ฟังท่านนายกพูดแล้วเทคโนโลยีกับคนต่อไปจะแยกกันออกจากกันลาบากมากเลยนะครับเหมือนเป็นส่วนสําคัญของกันและกันแต่ว่าเมื่อมีเป็นส่วนสําคัญแล้วการเอามาใช้งานของเทคโนโลยีกับคนจะเป็นอย่างไรนะครับอยากให้ท่านฟังมุมมองนี้จาก Oracle นะครับในเช้าวันนี้ได้รับเกียรติจาก Head of SCM Cloud Application ของ Oracle โดยที่ท่านจะมาพูดคุยให้เราฟังว่าเมื่อเทคโนโลยีกับคนพบกันแล้ว Oracle มีมุมมองในเรื่องนี้อย่างไรนะครับขอเสียงปรบมือต้อนรับคุณยาสัตดาเราครับสวัสดีครับ I love this presentation. Does it scare you? Does it make you worry about the future? Rise of machines. I think there's so much to be excited about when we talk about the future of technology. And what I want to do today is share with you how we can take some of these great ideas that we just heard and bring them to life. And I want to share with you why we should not be afraid. We should be excited. We should be curious. We should not worry about whether AI or robots will replace our jobs. But how we will prepare ourselves and our employees for new jobs that we don't even realize will exist. So let me share with you a few ideas. That we are thinking about at Oracle. At Oracle, we have built a cloud platform. For HR, what does that mean? It means that we believe that the way a modern company in Thailand, in Singapore, in India, in the U.S., in Europe, should be investing in the best, most modern technology to make their employees have a joyful experience at work. And I want to talk about what that means to have a joyful experience, and how do we use technology to do that. And then I want to share with you how we are thinking at Oracle about bringing to life some of the amazing things that the chairman just shared with us. Before I do that. Let me talk for a few minutes about us, not robots, humans, human resources, human capital management. For now, there is not robot capital management. So let's talk about humans and human behavior. What does this funny word mean? It means that we are able to teach ourselves new things. Twelve years ago, if we want to communicate, we use a phone in our house or our email. Now we only use the phone in our pocket. No one took a course to learn that. We learned it on our own. That's called a heuristic. The reason we are able to do that is because our brain is amazing. It gives us a reward. Every time we learn something new, we are addicted to self-discovery. That's how humans are innovative and curious. And the people that have figured this out the most in the world are the big consumer technology companies. You think about the biggest websites in the world. What do they all have in common? 
a search engine to find information, to find news about our friends, to search for videos, to look for things to buy, to look for new knowledge. Look, search, look, search. We are very curious. We want to find out things. We love self-discovery. And the reason we love it is that we get a rush in our brains of dopamine, that chemical that makes us feel good when we figure something out on our own. Can we go to the next slide, please? So these consumer technology companies have figured out. Think about Google. Who does all the work when you use Google? You type the search. They don't give you the answer. They give you 10 answers out of 242,312. And if you get it right, you say, thank you, Google. And if you get it wrong, you say, ah, oh, I made a mistake. We never blame them. Genius. You don't get paid, and they make billions of dollars of profit, and you're doing the work. They have figured out that we love self-discovery. And so have all the heads of marketing of all of these companies. They know that the more they interact with us and give us positive experiences, the more likely we are to continue to buy from them. Next slide, please. Hi, can you help me advance the slide, please? And if we look at Google again, this man used to be the head of all of this for Google, the head of marketing and performance marketing. And he says, we have to become digital anthropologists, digital psychologists. This is funny language for marketing. This is our language. If you work in organizational design, or the head of learning, like my friend from Siam Commercial, if you are uh, responsible for performance and goals, you might have this background, not the marketing people. Next slide, please. So why are they thinking like this? It's because they understand human behavior. If you've seen this before, if you have taken a psychology class, you've learned about the hierarchy of needs. How do we satisfy ourselves? How do we become happy? And the way we do that is by providing ourselves with joyful experiences. Let me give you a very quick example of what is a joyful experience. Do you recognize this technology? This technology is one of the oldest technologies in the world. It is called the door. And it is very famous because it is the oldest technology in the world, almost 10,000 years old, that still requires a written instruction. Why is there a written instruction? Because the maker of the door knows that if they do not provide the instruction and you do the wrong thing, you will have a bad experience. They want you to have a positive experience so that while you are on the phone, you look ahead, it says push, you push, good experience, positive. It doesn't mean you're laughing or dancing, but the absence of pain is a joyful experience. Why am I talking about that? Because when we think about the right way to design products and services, we have to think about human behavior. That the way to design things based on human experience is by paying attention to whether it brings enjoyment. And the definition of enjoyment is the absence of pain. And look at the language being used here. Good design starts with an understanding of psychology and technology. And this is exactly what we are doing at Oracle in everything we design for companies to provide to their employees the most positive employee experience. And why am I spending so much time talking about employee experience? Because providing a positive employee experience is proven 
to benefit our business. That we know when our employees are happy, our customers are happier. That our employees are more likely to recommend our products or working for us to their friends. They are more likely to become our advocate. Let me give you an example of how one of our customers is doing this in Southeast Asia. This is the CEO of DBS Bank. He has asked all of his managers to adopt either a customer journey or an employee journey as part of their KPIs because they recognize that the employee experience is as important as the customer experience. So now that we've talked about the importance of making our employees happy, I want to talk to you a little bit about what we need to do next. Our biggest priority is innovation. We have a platform that does everything that you think an HR platform should do, and it does it in the cloud, which means that it works on your mobile phone wherever you are working, and it updates every three months, just like the apps on your phone. You don't have to install new software in your office. It works in the cloud. And when we look to the future, we think about, first of all, which companies are going to disrupt our customers? Which companies are going to disrupt us? What new business models will come out that will force us to change and adapt? What are the new expectations of our customers and of our employees, of our workforce? And the reality is, no industry is immune. Last week, I was talking to a group of people just like this, and I said, it doesn't matter how big your company is or how long you have been around. If you don't move fast enough and do the right things for your customers and your employees, you can disappear tomorrow. There is evidence of this fact in this room, 20 meters to the left. When we look at companies like Grab and Uber, this is happening right in front of our faces. I work at a huge company. It is 40 years old, and we recognize this could happen to us, which is why we invest billions of dollars per year in defining what the future of work should look like. And the way we see that future of work, and the chairman did such a great job talking about where we are going, we believe today that we must focus on AI first. Our design philosophy at Oracle is that in everything we do, we take an AI first approach. That the new technologies that come out, we must immediately adapt to what it means for us in every segment of our business. If you are in finance or supply chain or HR like all of us, how do we start to use blockchain, not for finance, but to create an employee record that cannot be fraud fraudulent or, or amended? When we talk about autonomous software or the advent of Internet of Things, when we talk about the human interface, the chairman talked about the combination of man and machine. And he talked about taking your thoughts and immediately having it go into the computer. That sounds crazy and maybe far away. But think about this. How many of you have started using Google or Alexa or Siri to talk to your phone? The human interface is becoming more direct already. The keyboard is slowly going to disappear. We imagine a world where all the HR functions can be managed without a keyboard. And I will share with you what that might look like. So what does this mean for you? And what can you do about it today? One of the most exciting things for me in my job is that everything we are talking about is available to everyone. One of our largest customers in the world is the airport security people that you see in airports around the world. It's a company called G4S, 600,000 employees. But one of my favorite customers in the world is just north of here, 
northwest in Dhaka in Bangladesh, 1,000 aunties at sewing machines making t-shirts like this one, and they are using the same Oracle HCM cloud software as the largest companies, banks, and other institutions in the world. It's amazing that anyone can take advantage of this. Anyone can transform their organization through modern software. Simple, incremental things bring the future to us very fast. A few years ago at Oracle, we stopped providing offer letters on paper. We started sending it via email, but even in the email, no attachment, a link. Hey, you have an offer notification, click here. And when you click, it brings you to a screen, password protected, and the offer is there. And you click to accept, not sign. And the beautiful innovation was, instead of waiting until your first day of work to sit down with the HR administrator for two hours and write out all the forms, at Oracle it used to take us two hours per new employee to do the onboarding forms in the office on the first day. Now, as soon as they click accept, the next screen says, please fill out your benefits information. The next screen says, fill out your credit card application. The next screen says, fill out your residential details and your contact information. The onboarding gets done in the same time as the signing of the offer letter so that the first day of work is a better experience. More importantly, we save time and money for our HR people. We did the math. We said we are saving 16 years of work because we hire more than 14,000 people per year. Two hours times 14,000. Even if you have only 500 employees and you can save this time on 50 hires, it is a huge benefit. And so when we think about the future, we think about it in increments. When we talk about AI, we think about how do we introduce elements of artificial intelligence in everything we do. So that when you look through your database of everyone who has ever applied to your company because you are trying to find the ideal candidate, we want to surface the best candidate matches to the top even before you do too much searching because we read the job posting and we know what you're looking for. So we integrate AI into everything that we do. When we think about how we tie together things like IoT with HR, do you have any ideas of how we should do that? How do we integrate IoT with, with HR? Let me give you an example that we call the Oracle Connected Worker. Imagine if I work in a manufacturing facility, a hazardous workplace. Maybe it is a chemical plant. Internet of Things means that I have something, maybe it's my phone, in my pocket connected to the internet. And it means that sensors are picking up my activities. That's all that IoT means. Imagine if this is my work site. I am a worker in a chemical plant. I walk in, boop. Now time and labor has recorded that I am at work. So that's going towards my compensation and towards my time management. And I see a chemical spill. That's dangerous. Normally, what do I do? Do I run to get someone? What if somebody steps in it? Do I stay here and call someone? But the connected worker doesn't do either of those things. The first thing they do is pull out their phone, they go to their company app, and they choose report hazard. Take a picture. 
Instantly, the software knows where I am, what time it is, on what day. What kind of hazard? Chemical, biohazard. Okay. Immediately, it sends two warnings. All the staff in the facility, avoid zone A. Biohazard cleanup team, immediately to zone A. I wait there. They arrive. I go into my software and I say, wow, biohazard team arrived one minute early. Good job. That goes into their performance management. They clean up, they take a picture to say, all clear. A notice goes out to all the workers. Now it is safe. We have just managed workforce, uh, workplace hazards and safety and health. We have prevented injury. We have incentivized our team to move faster because we are tracking them and recognizing them. Maybe their bonus is tied to their speed. Maybe my bonus is tied to how many times I report an incident. And we make it as easy as possible for them. We want them to have a joyful experience. This is not in the future. This exists today. We call it Oracle Connected Worker. And we are very close, we hope, very shortly to tell you about companies in Thailand who are going to be implementing this. We are very excited about it. The future is already appearing today. And that's what we're trying to build, tomorrow's HR today. Let me give you another example that we are very excited about. This is, by the way, the interface for the connected worker, recognizing where I am in the plant and allowing me to send out broadcast alerts. Let me give you another example. How do we make tasks that are administrative and routine and tedious fun and easy to use? Is that a weird concept? Should we be having fun in the way we use our tools? I think using Facebook is fun. I think using Instagram is fun. If using technology in our personal life is fun, and easy and intuitive, then shouldn't we provide the same experience at work? If I am a manager and I want to promote someone, should I have to log into my desktop and go to a hundred screens and click a thousand times? I should be able to find my staff in the directory on my phone. I should be able to decide what action I want to take. If I have the approvals already done, I should be able to make the action happen in three clicks. And so that's what we have done. How do we create a positive employee experience for our leaders? How do we do simple, everyday tasks like apply for leave? We should be able to do that in three clicks. I'm not going to be able to come in today. Let me apply for one day leave. Go to leave. When am I on leave? Hit submit from my phone, from the train, from the car. 60 to 70% of everything we do in HR is administrative. Imagine what we could do if we had that time back. How many people in this room have, as part of their job, answering questions from employees? How many people every day have to answer questions from employees, from managers, from leaders? About one quarter of the room. How many of those, secret, are pretty dumb questions? You don't have to answer. We know it's the same questions over and over again. How much leave do I have left? How many people are working in this department? What is our postal code? <laughs> If we know what the top 100, 200 most common questions are that are taking up our time, and we also know all the weird ways that people like to ask those questions, let's write them down. Let's load them up into our system, and let's 
use the artificial intelligence that powers our chatbot to answer those questions for us. And by the way, that not only makes our life easier in HR, it makes the life of our employees easier. Also, it's less embarrassing to ask dumb questions if you are asking a bot. And the questions get answered instantly. You don't even have to write the full question. If you just write leave question mark, it knows what you're trying to ask. And it will respond, you have seven days left. If you want to know what is the average amount of time our software people have worked in this department, if that's a common question that you have loaded, the system should be able to give you a response instantly, while we focus on more strategic work and our employee has a positive experience. Does anyone play Pokemon Go? More people raising their hand for this question than my other question. Why am I showing this to you, and why am I showing you a picture of my kid? In his mind, Pokemon Go is normal technology. In our mind, it's something silly to play with. But imagine if we start to apply the concepts of augmented reality, like the chairman was talking about, to our employee experience. Imagine if the onboarding experience at your company we don't have to fill out the forms because that happened when we signed the offer letter. Instead, we show up at work and on the first day they say, welcome Kunyazad, here is your new office phone. Your onboarding starts now. Click. And I have to follow this avatar on an office tour. And as I find the toilets and the canteen, I get points. I finally meet my HR person. See the HR leader so busy busy doing work, not answering dumb questions. And I get 500 points for finding him. And he introduces me to the next group of people that I'm supposed to have lunch with. And I'm having an amazing first day. AI is giving me the tour of the office. All of this is possible today. How do we bring that future to life? The chairman talked about direct connection with technology. Let me tell you something. When I tell you that there's possible, it's possible to work without a keyboard, that exists today. We integrate because we are an open API platform with so many technology vendors, large and small, because we are focused on innovation. In this example, we integrate our HR software with Alexa. Imagine this lady is working from home today in her yoga pants and she says through Alexa to her company software, uh, computer, I'm pregnant. Hopefully we build some emotion into it and the computer says congratulations. But the next question from the computer is when are you due? Let's start capturing data. And she says, January 24th, wonderful. Your benefits entitle you to these three hospitals. Which hospital will you deliver at? Oh, I'm going to deliver at Bangkok General Hospital. Great, there are seven doctors in your plan. Which one is your plan? Okay, it's this doctor. Wonderful. Do you plan to take your full entitlement of leave? You are entitled to two months prenatal and six months postnatal per company policy. Yes, I do. Great, I have blocked your calendar already. I have drafted an email to inform your boss of the good news. I have started the company template for temporary handover of duties, and I have identified through the system which five people are most likely to be assigned your duties while you are on leave. I've also drafted a fun email to inform your team when you're ready to let them know. Would you like me to do anything else? Can you imagine this happening? This exists today. No keyboard, a system that communicates through artificial intelligence that gives an employee in possibly one of the most 
wonderful and yet stressful moments in their life a way of interacting with their company that is fast, that is intuitive, that is not stressful, and that provides her with a wonderful employee experience. This is what we're focused on. How do we build tomorrow's HR today? And this is an example of what we have already designed. So we're very excited to share all of this with you. But the reality is, you do not need to start with some fancy robot telling you which hospital you can deliver your baby at. The reality is that we have customers like Flamingo Fashions in Dhaka that are using this same AI-powered HR software to track the records and performance and compensation of 1,000 people who work at sewing machines. And that same technology is used across Thailand by companies like AXA, like Fuji Xerox. Of course, they may use it more robustly than a small textile manufacturer, but it is the same platform, the same technology. And every three months, we are committed to introducing new updates and new innovations. We are big believers in the future of work, we are big believers in the future of Thailand and Thailand 4.0. If you look at the four pillars from the Ministry of Labor in the 20-year plan, we are talking about creative workers, innovative workers, and brain power. These are three of the four pillars. How do we free up our time, our leaders' time, and our employees' time so that they can leverage the power of AI to supplement their brain power so that they have more time to be innovative and to be creative and power the future of Thailand 4.0. We are extremely committed to that. And I invite you to join us at our booth, which is in the middle of the room. We're very proud to be a platinum sponsor of this event and have our team answer any questions that you have about bringing this to life in your organization today. Thank you very much. ครับก็เป็นเซสชันที่น่าสนใจของ Oracle มากซึ่งจริงๆต้องบอกในกรณีศึกษาที่ Oracle ใช้ไม่ว่าจะเป็นวิธีการเอาแอปพลิเคชันนะครับมาช่วยในการลดงานนะครับถือบอกว่าประหยัดเวลาของ HR ไปได้กี่ปีนะฮะสิปีเนื่องจากต่อปีนี่รับคนหลายหมื่นคนแต่ละหมื่นคนนั้นทุกคนต้องใช้เวลาเวลาเข้างานแล้วต้องใช้กรอบแบบฟอร์มคนละ2ชั่วโมงนะครับก็ทําให้ประหยัดเวลาไปได้เยอะมาอันนี้ก็เป็นแค่หนึ่งตัวอย่างนะครับซึ่งเดี๋ยวใน